from Jeannie. And she says, ever since I was a little girl, I would go through periods where I experienced the skin crawling or itching sensation happening all over my body. It wasn't linked to any allergies or bugs, according to my mom, but she tried all she could to help. This still happens off and on, and it disturbs my sleep and meditations for a few weeks, then it disappears. Could you help me understand what's going on subconsciously or what is happening with my body when I go through these periods of time? Seeing weird things like a cluster of spots or weird bugs can trigger it, but sometimes nothing needs to trigger it. It just starts. So she's curious about that. All right, so let me break down a, a little bit. Let's back up a little bit. And let let me explain to you how this biological computer works and speaks to you, okay? So first you have to understand that you are 80% energy and 20% body density, right? You're 20% human, 80% spirit. And you have come in very specifically, which means that your body, although you think that you kind of jumped in, right? Into a body with two parents and a reality, there's so much more that goes into that than you could even fathom in this dimension. There is so much setup. There is so much pre-planning. There is so many um, convoluted, organized systems that are designed for your specific reality. Okay. So even though you're like, why am I a woman? Why did I choose this body? Why did I choose these parents? Let's 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 go backwards and let's look at who you are as energy. As an energy being, you have been in existence as long as energy has existed. Okay? So we could call it soul, we could call it spirit, whatever. To me, what it is 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 a fractal or a piece of source energy or the source of all creation, creator itself. And creator itself, if you are a fractal or a fraction or a piece, then you are in fact creator. So what that kind of looks like as far as storytelling purposes go, because time doesn't technically exist, but for storytelling purposes, I really need to kind of like create a linear understanding here for you. When we break apart from source energy, it is all about experience. Like, oh, yay, let's break apart from, from source energy and let's feel separation, right? So a piece of glass that was used to be part of a, a glass bottle is still part of a glass bottle, although it's having a very separate experience, right? Hidden underneath a carpet somewhere while the other piece of glass is in the trash, okay? So you have to look at it not saying that we are trash, but a good analogy of broken glass or a broken mirror. So as we kind of break apart because we want to experience thyself and the way that we can experience ourself from kind of separating or at least having the feeling of separation or having the experience of separation is to move away from creator into density, like further and further away. Now, to me, there's nothing more fun than, than getting so lost, right, in density that you may forget who you are, okay? And as you get further and further and further and further away, it's like a cell signal. It's like further and further, your connection starts to drop. It's in and out, right? And all of a sudden, you're in a dead space. You're wandering through existence, right? And the, and the more linear experience you spend, you know, floating through time and space, without that direct connection or cell cell, right? Then you begin to try to figure out who you are without that connection, without that lifeline, without that wisdom and knowledge flowing through and to you, you begin to a very much experience separation. Now, only a tiny piece of you has even gone on this expedition why? Because you want to experience contrast. Like, hmm, okay, so I've experienced summer. What does winter feel like? Hmm, okay, what does fall feel like, right? What does the ocean taste like? What does the lake taste like? It's just a different experience. And when you're coming from source energy, there is never any judgment about the extremes and contrast that you're experiencing. So the further you get lost, the more fun it is because when you get back, oh, the stories you shall tell, right? Because the thing about consciousness is it's basically its own energy learning computer, 
right? And it learns from experiencing self through reflections, through density, through contrast, through separation. And it begins to evolve and have all different types of experiences. And the further you get away, the heavier you get, which means if you, you know, started to float to the bottom of the ocean, right? Eventually gravity would take in and it, it would be much more difficult to get back up with no momentum, okay? So, and this is the story of, of creation itself. You know, this isn't just you and me. It's, it's, you know, billions upon billions upon probably that's not even a good number because it's not big enough. Uh, fractal consciousness is having these unique experiences all separated from the one, all thinking that they're a different unit because creatively they have had different experiences that have shaped the way that their soul remembers themselves. But as one drop of the ocean is still the ocean, if that drop returns to the ocean, it literally disappears, although still having its unique experience moves back into unity. Okay, so as we have broken apart, certain particles of ourselves get so heavy and so dense and so lost in the struggle and so lost in separation that we no longer have the momentum or the, the engine to work our way back home. Okay, so if you've ever seen a rocket start to launch up, right, and it's heavy, it's heavy, it's heavy, and it has to build momentum up, right? And so that bottom piece has to fall, okay? And then the smaller piece goes really fast up in space. That's you. So you will break apart, go into density, and the other part of you will remain non-physically focused, kind of using that cell Wi-Fi signal to keep in touch with you, okay? Like you're in density, I'm in, I'm in non-physical reality, I can't vibrate down there. You can no longer vibrate up here. So we're going to stay in connection through this like wireless signal. Okay. And, and that is all secondary after you have chosen your incarnation, your life path, your soul purpose, your life purpose, you know, what the heck you're going to go down in density and experience. It's like, okay, if you're going to dive down, if you're going to put all that gear on, put some oxygen on and dive off a boat, what the heck is the purpose? You're just going to go kick around. No, you're going to look for something. You're going to go experiencing something. You're going to go find something. And in our case, the reason why we love to have incarnation after incarnation after incarnation is because we get to have so many different experiences as the same spirit, as the same energy. And it's just like, oh, what are you going to be this Halloween? What are you going to be next Halloween? Wow, I got to be which? What was that like? What, you know, so we have no judgment and separation, but we will choose specifically our storyline based in what we have left to resolve. Like, okay, if there's bits and pieces of fractal consciousness of you, lost in density, who no longer can get back, get back to source energy on their own because of the, the way that they're heavy, and the way that they're so far that they may be having the experience that they are disconnected from source, then what happens is any part of that dense version of yourself that still remains hopeful or grateful or appreciative or loving will break apart because it's light and it will basically return, return home as an SOS. Like we need to send, you know, a cavalry in and get, you know, Let's go get her. Okay. We got to go get her because she's lost in density. So I will send an SOS back to source energy with the part of myself that did remain loving or did remain light back. It'll hook on with my, the part of me that was waiting in the cosmos to return the circuit, go get some alter, go get some help, come back in non-physical reality because we can't get that dense, create soul contracts, create a mission, create structure, create actors in the movie, create all these things to basically have this experience to wake the rest of you up. And we do this over and over and over and we chip away and we chip away and we chip away until the wholeness of ourselves returns all the way back to source energy. And we call that the ascension. So we are on a reconnaissance mission back to ourselves. So the deepest, most lost parts of you remain unconscious, physically focused, feeling there is no God, there is no help, there is no universe, there, there is no love. And the part of you that's like, hey, you're too far into the abyss or that part of you is too far. 
So what that looks like for your question is when we're creating our soul contracts, what we do from a non-physical place, your team, your strategy team, the part of you that can see where you are, see where you're lost, love you unconditionally, but you can't hear them, we'll create a life path uh, plan for you, a treasure map, a, a GPS system to get more of you back into light. Even if it's a chunk, be happy. Even if you smile and kiss a puppy, we'll take that part home, right? So there's a huge mission going on all the time in reincarnation. It's not like, oh, I think I'll go be a woman this time. It's very specifically designed to maximize the potential of awakening. Now, we know that in density, the way that we awaken the most is through pressure and pain. It's usually been our greatest teacher. It usually kind of smacks us awake. You know, it's the loving mother, wake up, honey, wake up, honey, or the dad pouring water over the kid. What's going to wake you up faster? Doesn't matter if it pisses you off. It's okay because it's a challenge to wake you up. So the parents you picked, the um, the body that you picked, the gender that you picked, the color of your skin that you picked, the, where you live on the planet, your economic system, your church that your family goes to, the schooling system that you're going to go to has all been pre-designed 100% without fail. It's been a calculated treasure map back to your own awakening to reconcile and reintegrate back to another piece of yourself that remembers you. Look at that word, remember, put back together. And the part of you that stays non-physically focused is always calling you home. There's no one that loves you the way that you love you. There's no one who knows what you've been through like you. Right. But every time we look outside of ourselves, right, we don't give ourselves the opportunity to reconnect with that cell, cell signal, which is us, which is why I'm always telling you guys to ask yourselves the question first. Put the phones down. Stop calling your psychics. Stop calling your mamas. Ask yourself because it may take a little bit of time to get to you. But when you ask, it's given. And when you ask for help, it is there. You may not be able to hear it because you have built walls around your heart and only heart is telepathic. But if you give yourself time and space, if you give yourself an opportunity, you will begin to hear yourself, okay? So that's like in another question, but it's, it's, it's part of this. I love this question. So, all right, now we come to the understanding that we have built a story, a movie, a reconnaissance mission to get the loving fractal part of your source energy to reconcile with the darker, heavier, dense, unhappy parts of you, right? So we set up this challenge for ourselves. Challenge is all about forcing ourselves into possibilities, okay? Lots of limits, you know. And the reason why there's so many limits created in front of your journeys in this life is because the part of you that is in density suffering has what's called karmic energy around it. And now I don't, I'm not in love with that word because your subconscious tends to think that it's what you did bad, you're going to suffer for. But I see it more as cause and effect. What you put out is what you get back. All right. And the more lost in density you are, the more likely you're going to believe in yourself, in love, in anybody else, right? You're gonna constantly be manifesting failures and opportunities. You're gonna be constantly going through shame to guilt, to humiliation, to suffering, into resentment and avoiding loss, right? And then going through your death experience and, and basically trying to start the whole game over again. So it's, it's literally like one step at a time. And even if it takes what we would call linear a billion years to reconcile a soul completely, it would be worth it because, oh, the stories you would tell, right? I mean, come imagine what you would bring back to source energy that you have experienced when you forgot who you were. And that's the whole point of the game, guys. So in your case, when a body is, is ready to be manifested through spirit, there are soul contracts and there is a, a kind of genetic design that goes on through the intention space and focus of our quantum uh, signature of our soul. So we're like, okay, 
this part of me does not believe in love. This part of me has been beaten and broken and abused and is suffering and hates the world and keeps killing herself or keeps killing other people. And there is almost no hope except what is the one thing that we saw the last time she had her death experience that when we reconciled through that kind of higher vibrational, um, I don't want to call it redemption or, but that purgatory space where we all had a conversation before they forgot again who they were. We remembered that they saw, they saw a spark of love in their eye when they saw a dog. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, right. Okay. But at the same time, what turns it on, turns it off. So we want to pressurize her and we want to put her in such an uncomfortable situation that she is forced to ask for help. She is forced to wake up. Okay. But we also want to put lots of flashlights in the dark and lots of memories of source energy and lots of opportunities. You know, it's almost like when you're looking at a treasure map, there's like, you know, a lion's den and a tar pit, but there's like all of a sudden you see a flashlight and a chunk of gold over there. Right. And that is pretty much what our life looks like. So when we are combining source energy and the density part of our, our fractal consciousness. We are existing in what would be called Akashic records or space. Akashic is the memory or the knowing of all that you have, you have experienced. And you have your own Google filing system through the universe, all through a quantum database. Okay, so everything that has existed still exists. Everything that could exist that you've thought about, witnessed, wanted, thought, you know, concerned, dreamed about still exists. All your lives are, are consecutively existing, right? And the ones that are dense and lost in suffering are still vibrating, right? Like a ghost walking around a house at the same time every night, not knowing that that part of itself has moved into the light. It leaves a fragment of its consciousness to play out a story. You know, you'll notice when people start to get a little senile, they start telling the same stories over and over again. So the parts of you that have been chipped away and were too heavy to go back to source energy because of what you experienced, witnessed, or uh, or perpetrated on another remains in a place of kind of that idea of insanity, right? Like senile kind of telling the same story. It's like a ghosted version of you walking around repeating cycles, repeating cycles. And there's no one home except the memory of you because you've so far detached yourself from remembering who you are that you can even have the experience of not remembering. Okay. So you start out with your Akashic space and the higher consciousness of you who's trying to reconcile you home begins to formulate a plan and puts together a life experience for you that will help you break off a piece or come completely home, right? Because your higher self is like, I just need a piece. Because the lighter you get, the lighter you get, the lighter you get, the lighter you get, then you totally integrate, all right? So what you'll notice is that your kids are much more loving than you were allowed to be, right? Your parents were a lot more heavy and dense. So what's happening is as the ascension moves along, everybody's kind of lightening up, but they're also in the light experiencing pain more transparently than we did say a hundred years ago. Like your kids are like, I'm feeling my feelings, whether you like it or not, right? I'm choosing my gender. I'm choosing my sexuality, right? So it's like you'll notice that as the generations pass, you can really kind of see this linear expression of fractal consciousness recalibrating with its divine self. That's why the kids get smarter and smarter as the generations go on through this ascension. Now you start off not through cells and molecules and bones and organs. You start off in subatomic energy. The subatomic energy is collected from your Akashic space. It is like building a blueprint of you, you know, past, present, future, reconciled, traumatized, abused, loved, all aspects of you formulate into you. Okay. And, and it's not you, 
It's the you that will tell the story the best to get you to your next level of awareness. So the parents you choose, the life experience that you choose, the body you choose, the gender you choose, it's all specifically designed. There is no randoms in the universe. Everything is deliberate. Okay. And it is deliberately designed to bring you or a piece of you home, no matter the cost. Okay. So hopefully you're following me. So the subatomic structure then as a blueprint of energy creation of the, of the idea of you that you will play out in this incarnation to become more aware will now encode all of that subatomic memory ideas, commands, routes, right? Destinies, formulas into the cellular structure of the body that is being created from mom and dad. And it's all, it's all part of a web designed from lineage, bloodlines, parents, DNA, right? It's like, like me. Okay. So for years I was like, why God, why did you give me this family? You know, this mother and this father and why, you know, and then as I get to this point, I'm like, Oh, gotcha. Right. I know what I was here to work out and reconcile because part of me was too dark. And there was a part of me that remembered the light and we came together. It's like a demonic space and an, and an angelic space came together and birthed you because you are the dense part and the light part incarnated. So you needed both aspects of mom and dad's genetics, gender, and thought process, belief structures. You needed their traumas. You needed their pains. You needed their victories. You needed their intuitive gifts to collect and grow you. Right. So with that idea, I'm learning a lot about the cannabis plant. And to me, cannabis and the human design are very wildly tied because of genetic modifications of cannabis strains creating different outcomes for different experiences is no different than you choosing, manipulating right? Your own body for a specific reason. Just like I watch my fiance, he'll, you know, extract and he'll say, you know, he's teaching me about the farming part of it and how, you know, all we have to do is tell the plants that it's daylight all the time and they keep growing. How do we tell them, right? Through frequency and vibration. So you are tuning, doing that with yourself, acting as the sun and hydration of, of that. So subatomic energy. So now you come in, you are a blueprint. You are a masterpiece of genetic design. I mean, if you could see what you created, you would literally be crying in awe of the magnificence of the part of you that is, is designed to awaken from the part of you that loves you the most all in one house. So you're like, Jess, this does not answer my question. I think it's important though, because where I'm going with this is for you to understand that your body is much more intelligent in your Akashic records than you could have any clue of. Your subconscious mind remembers everything. Your unconscious mind knows everything about you, about where you've been, what you've seen, what's been done to you, what you've done to others, because that summary in that subatomic space is the totality of all of you, of all of your experiences in one house. Right now, you know, why families struggle so much because it's a, a metaphor, right? All that energy under one roof is scary, right? The best parts of you, the worst parts of you all in one house, the body. Now, because the body remembers everything, it is going to communicate with you through feelings. Okay, because it's not like, hey, Jess, we're down here. But I will tell you, the more you begin to work with yourself, the more that conversation starts to sound like that. 
But when we're so separate from ourselves and we have given our power away and we are still learning to trust ourselves and we're still, you know, on that journey to remember who we are and understand ourselves, there is a major disconnect between kind of the mind, the body and the spirit. Okay. And when there is that disconnect between the mind, body and spirit, we're kind of, instead of facing inward, we're facing outward and we're asking for people's help to tell us what's going on with us. Okay. Well, the more you turn in and the more you face, you know, as like, imagine that the, there was three people and they were all, you know, they had their backs to each other and they were looking out. All right. And they were asking everybody around you, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And all they really needed to do was kind of turn around and face each other and be like, oh, okay. There you are. And one of them's a body and one of them's a soul. And one of them is that kind of conscious, dense part of you that's been sitting here, right? Waiting for the rest of you to show up. Um, so what will happen is because your body has the memory of everything you've ever experienced and is designed through a karmic space to utilize other unconscious places in your existence to pull and push on you, right? Like irk you, put, trigger you, then you will begin to kind of reconcile many, many, many different death experiences in this reality. Okay. Death experiences can come in all forms. You know, notice how boring this reality is compared to like some of the past lives we've gone on to in hypnosis. You know, it's like, wow. I mean, in the 16th century, I was like awesome and, you know, walking in castles and I had beautiful clothes and I had Prince Charming and now I'm like got a crappy coworker and psoriasis. Like, it's not cool. But it's a lot easier to reconcile when things are boring than when you may not live to be 14. So this is why the ascension is getting more awareness, but more boring because we can then force ourselves to look within and we're not getting beheaded every other lifetime, honestly. So your situation is unique because when I look at your timeline, as far as what you're here to karmically experience, reconcile and resolve. Okay. And through resolving your own inner conflict of pain, a byproduct of that is sharing that. Okay. Because as you begin to become yourself, your energy field expands and the memories of that love within yourself begins to radiate. And through telepathic nature of the heart, it, it begins to permeate into other people's fields. And it's like bright lights are waking up. It's almost like a tiny little candle can light a million candles and not burn out. And that is kind of the purpose is, you know, one person wakes up and it becomes kind of the domino effect or the hundred monkey effect. And that is another reason why this time and space is so magical right now is because we don't have to necessarily try as hard or work as hard to get our own attention when there's so much light on the planet. Your situation is this, the, the prickly scales, the weird energy that you get in your body that feels almost like allergic reaction is coming from a death experience that is in full PTSD, post-traumatic stress um, in this now moment. Okay. So when you're saying, okay, it's not, it's not animal related. It's not food related. It's not bug related. It's not meditation related. It's not anything. What is it? Well, it had to be something. So whatever kind of triggered when you, when you were little, it reminded your body, of a particular death experience that you continue to resist and feel, resist and feel, resist and feel. So, and I'm just gonna tell you what it is because I mean, not that you need to know this, but this particular incarnation, I would say less than 200 years ago, it was a, um, you were playing the part at that point of creating kind of this witch's coven, divine feminine, mm -hmm, and very much about creating spells and tinctures and formulas in order to kind of move divine masculine into your own will. It was almost like if I was gonna put this in a movie to just give it a easy name, you were creating love potion number nine, okay? now. 
as you were kind of the head of this operation, you have a huge line lineage in your bloodline at this particular incarnation of very powerful, you know, witch energy or, you know, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm not trying to stereotype the, the idea, but it was very much the feeling of that. And something went terribly wrong and um, ended up losing your sister. Now, as you lost your sister, it, it spiraled you into a huge amount of shame and guilt, right? Because again, it was all about the empowered woman. It was all about kind of this, it's almost this revenge almost, and this will that you wanted to kind of bend. And it, it wasn't for no other reason than, you know, broken heart, hurt people do hurt people. In the essence of that, you lost your sister. So a part of you broke off and went deeper into density and a part of you that was the loving part of your sister returned back and integrated. So the prickly, prickly, pricklies came back online. So remember you guys that when you re-experience a vibration that is from the past, um, it will flip a switch and bring that timeline into this timeline. And so you won't remember necessarily that, but you'll start to manifest things in your reality to pick up where you left off, okay? So now you're finding yourself vibrating, right? Having desires, having strange guilt and shame, rescuing, right? And so you're finding these things and the body reaction that is trying to get your attention is the part of your grief that you have not completely mourned. So I would say that when you started to experience this, it was in a sleep experience. It was in a, um, because you've always been able to travel. Okay. You probably might've shut that down at some point, but Early on in your, your younger years, you were able to do the astral travel and you reconnected with that particular heartbreak and pain and it kind of shoved you right back in your body. And so it's almost like prickly needles when your body begins to wake up. So it's the, it's actually all it is, is it's a reoccurring death experience manifesting like a ghost in your body. I know I just spent like 43 minutes or something telling that story, but I think that there was a lot of meaning for a lot of people there. So that's what it is. So it's not like you're necessarily allergic to what is in front of you. You're having an allergic reaction to the memory of suffering that you do not want to feel. All pain in the body is a call for love. It is a memory of home and it is a check engine light. Okay. Remember me, remember me, remember me. So here is your biohack. Long story. You are a commander in chief of your reality. You are moving into this ascension where you are starting to remember yourself. So this will be very easy breezy for you. You are the creator. So what I need you to do is instead of questioning what is happening to me, let's ask, what is this showing me? How is this helping me remember? Right? How is this my teacher? These are questions that I want you guys to start asking yourself versus trying to Google your sensations, right? You're going to get a story when really I need you to go into the subatomic or the subconscious space and start rooting around in there asking some big questions. Okay, so did you need to know that story? No, but it helps the biohack part because you're like, okay, I'm just reconciling a piece of me, right? This piece of me is irritated. This piece of me gets inflamed when certain energy is remembered, recoiled, or, or renounced. When I get around this particular memory, person, idea, or thing, I feel the sensation. It's just a body memory. It's the ghosting energy coming back through of the death experience that you didn't let yourself complete. So because you didn't let yourself complete it, it still resides as that ghosted frequency or that itchiness. Okay. And that is your... Your, your kind of cosmic PTSD, your Akashic space, moving through your cellular memory, but because you're not asking your body, hey, what's going on in there? You're going, hey, what's going on in here, right? So first and foremost, you don't even need to know why, you just need to know that you can. It's time for us to integrate this piece of ourselves. So we're gonna put one hand on our heart, and I, and I always usually use the right hand, 
you can use your left. It's there's no rhyme or reason in, in non-duality. I use the right hand and I put it on my heart space so that I can kind of remember where my telepathic space is because this is where I'm going to communicate from. Okay, my arm is an extension of my heart and it is demonstrating that I am unified. Okay, now I'm going to put the other hand on that timeline. Okay, I'm going to put the other hand out to where that timeline feels like it might be, right? Okay, it might be over here, right? Maybe I don't know, but I'm just going to put my hand up and command through intention and focus that that part of me, the dense part of me that is still suffering from the loss of my sister, still angry at divine masculine, is going to call forth the energy. And through the left hand space, I'm going to allow and accept myself completely that I am love and that I am here to be love. And as I remember my heart and I remember my pain, I'm going to close the gap. I'm going to, I'm going to basically collapse the wave. All right, take a deep breath. Now, you guys, you can do this with anything that's going on with you. Any reoccurring issue, any reoccurring chronic pain is most likely a incarnation that is disassociated from you that you're not actually seeing the reflection of in your reality right so if i were going to say okay genie let's like let's be honest like what's your relationship with the divine masculine and what's your relationship with the sister energy we could find it vibrating right now okay so hopefully that helped um you can use that quantum two point for anything you are commander in chief. It will actually help you biohack and reconcile a lot more of your fractal consciousness lost in space and bring yourself home because only you know how to love you. Only you know you. Only you know what you've done good, done bad, done right, done wrong, even in the eyes of judgment. And you don't actually care. You love yourself. So you need to be the one that does that.